I want to talk to you about five types of scientific investigations. Field studies are the first kind of scientific investigation. Field studies involve free living plants or animals. The subjects are observed without changing anything about the setting, the right, we're not harming anything, we're not altering anything, we're just looking at what naturally occurs. So a question that goes really well with a field study is when do the birds migrate to and from our local park? Models are the second kind of investigation. They are a simplified representation of a system. Models are useful for studying systems that are too big, like the entire earth all at once, uh, which is where we'll end the semester, too small, uh, like DNA, where we can't actually see it, but we have to figure out how it works, um, too fast or sl too slow to study directly. So when we get to DNA, we'll talk about how can the shape of DNA explain how it can carry the code for life. Secondary research is when you're doing research and the data has already been collected. So the data, there are thousands of data sets out there. Anything that's paid for by the US government is uh, free and publicly available, the data set is, and that is on a variety of websites. So we could look at things like how does latitude or elevation of an area affect the day of the year that the buds on a particular species of tree open? Uh, it's a pretty good ecological question. We're finding that that day is changing based on the temperature of the earth. So that's um, some of those bigger whole picture pieces. We can also do an observational study where we're recognizing that something is occurring and then we're going to measure what it is that's occurring. So you can do observational studies frequently with disease and disease spreading. Um, they also did a really good nurse's health study um, when they were back in the 50s, it started to measure what the effect of taking birth control was on women's health. But that rapidly expanded to include things like nutrition and exercise. And we've learned a lot in 60 years over about the health of women based on that one observational study. The next is the controlled experiment. Controlled experiments are kind of the gold standard of scientific research. Uh, we always prefer to do a controlled experiment if it's at all possible to do a controlled experiment. So one, right, in a controlled experiment, that means that all of the variables are kept the same, except for the one that's changed, and that's called the independent or manipulated variable, and the one that's measured, and that's the dependent or responding variable. So we can measure how does the amount of water affect how quickly a surface heats up. That would be a nice controlled experiment where we would have water, the amount of water being our independent variable and our responding variable would be the rate of temperature rise. Controlled experiments are helpful when you are doing uh, scientific research around uh, supplements. They're really good for um, pieces. We generally do randomized control trials where people are assigned randomly to either the experimental group where they receive the drug or the control group where they receive a placebo. In all ex controlled experiments in biology and health, they're really trying to beat the placebo effect. And that is that if I give you a pill that's completely filled with sugar and tell you it will fix you, about 30% of the time it will. It's just the effect of your brain believing that this will help and then making you better because of that. In a blind study, the patients don't know if they're getting the treatment or the placebo. In a double blind study, the researchers don't know if the patients are getting a placebo or the treatment and the patients don't know if they're getting a placebo or a treatment. And this is to try and mitigate the effects of your brain because your brain is very powerful and if you know that you're giving somebody a drug, you're gonna act differently than if you know you're giving them the placebo. So we do double blind studies to help prevent those kinds of pieces. If you need solid information about anything that is actually considered to be a drug and have an effect on your body, that will be on the FDA approved drug list. You can go there and look up um, all of the FDA's research and findings about that particular drug. You have to watch out for the words clinically proven because clinically proven means that some doctor somewhere has put the substance on a person in a lab and we know not all doctors are as ethical as we would like them to be. Um, you can say clinically proven in your ad and then at the bottom you say this statement hasn't been evaluated by the FDA and you can say anything's clinically pr proven so long as you put that statement at the very bottom. So check your ad very carefully for that.